Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at data binding and how, how to pass data from our front end to our back end. So let's get started. And today, I want to create a simple uh, registration form. So let's go create a, the HTML first for it. So I'll remove everything we have already and I'll replace it with a simple form. And then I'll add in an input and I'll give it a placeholder. I say, what name? Yeah. And I'll duplicate this multiple times. Another one for our email. And then one for password. And then at the bottom, I'll create a simple button. And I say, create. Okay. So let's go and check this out. This is how it looks. It doesn't look very pretty. For now, we're not going to be focusing on the design. Later on, we will do that on later episodes. But we have a simple form. So what I want to happen is I want the user to type in their name, their email, and their password. And when they click create, I want to send a request to our backend and then create a new user and maybe later on display them. So that is quite easy to do. In order to bind or pass a data from your front end to your back end, it's done in two steps. Step one, you need to define these variables or these data as a public property on your component. So let's go over here. We can get rid of this username. So I want three things. I define three public properties. First one is going to be name. The second one is going to be email. And then last one is going to be password. So first you need to define these as public property. So they are accessible to our blade file and our front end. And then to bind them together, right? Kind of sync them. So when we change the front end, it will be sent to our back end. We can pass all of our inputs an attribute called wire model okay and then inside wire model you can give it the name of your public property so we have name email and password i'll just give it name and i'll repeat this for all of our inputs so this one's going to be email this one's going to be password right and this will automatically make it so whenever we send a request to our backend it will also include or pass along name email and password so the way we can test this is actually quite simple. I'll go ahead and I'll actually create a button here. I'll add wire click, what we did on the previous episode, and I pass it this create new user. And there's going to be one issue with this. I'll show you guys what I mean by that. I'll create this for now. And if we reload and I'll just click on the create button, the page actually reloaded, right? So basically we submitted an HTML form. In order to fix that and not send the form so because we have this form element here uh, we are this wire click is not working we can actually add a prevent here and this will prevent normal form executions right and if we go and test it out now the page didn't reload now we are getting an error and that's because uh, we already have a user with test.test .test, so it's giving us an error it's okay we'll fix that in a second but that's the way to fix it, okay? So if you have a form, always use wire click prevent. There is an alternative syntax, and what we can do is use wire submit, and this is kind of a shorter way of doing it. And I think our function was create new user. So now that we have done this, I'll go ahead and I'll comment this out for now so we don't get an error. I'll reload the page and I'll inspect the element. What I'll do is I'll go inside network and I'll type in some user. Okay, so test uh, email at test.com and some random password. I'll click create. And as you can see, we send an Ajax request. And if you look at the payload, the payload is what Livewire sent from our front end. We go in components, zero. Then first of all, you can see in the snapshot that public properties all are visible to our front end. So uh, you need to always be careful not to put anything sensitive inside here. But if you look at updates, you can see whatever we type in in the form is actually being sent to our backend, right? So when we add model, wire model, we're basically telling Livewire to pass in whatever we have in our inputs to our server, right? So this is where it's coming from if you guys wondered how Livewire is doing it. So now that we have done that, we can actually go to our just create new user, update it, and then instead of using hard-coded data, actually use our public properties. So I can say name, and then I'll do the exact same thing for 
email, I say this email, this password, just like that. And it should work. So we can, and one thing we can do is we can actually display all the users on our page, right? On the previous episode, we created this users all. Well, we can actually go ahead and use this today. So I'll go ahead and under our form, I'll add an HR tag and then I'll use a for each loop or each users, user, and then I'll just echo out. I'll create like a P tag and then say, or maybe we can go with an H3 tag and display just the user's name, okay? Just like that. So I'll save this. Let's go ahead and test it out. I just click on create and boom. Uh, this is the new user I just created. I'll add another one. I say user123. We need to make sure we change the email because we have a unique check on our database. And just like that, guys, we have created a simple registration page. It doesn't look pretty. We don't have any CSS. But just like that, we have created basically a dynamic registration page without any page reloads. And it works very fast. As you can see, I'll, I'll update this. Boom. And Liver is also updating it and displaying the user under it in just a, a few seconds. Okay, very easy to do. Now, we don't have validation yet. I'll cover that on the next episode. But this is just the very, the very basics of data binding. Now, there is some security concerns regarding public properties. Now, whenever you pass data using render method, they won't be publicly accessible unless you echo them on the screen. However, public properties are always visible to your front end users. So you should never put some sensitive information here. Okay, so if you have some, I don't know, secret password, uh, you should not use a public property to store them. Always use the render method. Okay, that's the better way of doing it. And we can also check this out. If I reload the page and we go on our and maybe here I'll set name to secret name. And then I here I say secret email. and we go in our element, it's actually available here. I don't know if you guys can see it, it's quite hard to do, but on our div, there is a, something called wire snapshot. So all the public properties are included in the snapshot, right? So you need to always be careful of that. So you don't use, you don't include some sensitive information in the public snapshot. And again, all of these can be changed by the user. So you should never trust anything that's inside these public properties. Always you should validate them. So on the next episode, I'll cover how we can actually validate what the user enters in these public properties and when they send the form. So I hope you guys learned something new. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, I appreciate it if you guys like the video. YouTube likes people liking the videos. It shows it to more people. And also don't forget to subscribe so you're notified of the latest episode. Have a great day and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye.